So today's session will be recorded. If you have a question that you would like to ask and you prefer for your um, name not to be shown or you prefer not to be on camera, you are welcome to private message me or our phenomenal um, guest host today. So again, welcome to today's session, Bonafide Mind and Money, the intersections of youth and young adult wellness and money. And this is sponsored by Intac. This presentation was prepared for Intac under cooperative agreement from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration. All the material here is copywritten and it um, belongs to our phenomenal guest speaker today, Pamela McCoy. We ask that you do not reproduce or copy this information without permission from SAMHSA or the authors. And the information shared here is specifically prepared by Pamela McCoy. It does not um, endorsed by SAMHSA, Department of Health and Human Services, or any other entity. Session security, we do not foresee any session um, interruptions or security issues today. In the event that this occurs, we will immediately end this session and a new Zoom link will be sent. We encourage you, if you have not already done so, please go to our website to learn more about Intact our National Training and Technical Assistance Center for Child, Youth, and Family Mental Health. This is a list of our partners, and you can go to our website to learn more about each of our partners and also learn more about our services and our vision for individuals, for organizations, for youth, children, young adults, and families. And we provide free technical assistance. We provide free services such as this webinar, and other services. Again, if you are not connected, we encourage you to join our mailing list because you will receive information about upcoming events. Some frequently asked questions. A certificate of completion will be provided to everyone who um, is on this, the call today via call or via um, internet connection, via what I want to say, via call or live here today. Also, um, a copy of the presentation will not be sent out, but we are recording it, so you will receive a copy of the recording in the email. Also, we are offering CEUs. Following this session, you will receive a link to complete an evaluation. Once you complete that evaluation, you will be directed to another portion of our website to apply for CEUs. So again, our session today, Bonafide Mind and Money, the intersections of youth and young adult mental health, mental wellness and money. And I am honored and so excited. Finally, this has been in the works for a while, but we have a phenomenal guest speaker with us today, Pamela McCoy. She is the CEO of Bonafide, DCC and B5 Reaffirm. Welcome, Pamela. Good afternoon, everyone. I am delighted to be here. Um, the session is going to be interactive, so I need you guys to be dropping your questions, comments in the chat, engage. I have information that I'm going to disseminate, but this session is really all about you guys. So what I want to do or our objective today is to provide you guys tools and information on how to present and disseminate information to our youth, our young adults, as it relates to what I call financial capability. Some people refer to it as financial literacy, but I like to refer to it as financial capability. And the reason being that it is my firm belief that everyone has some level of knowledge, some level of capability, if you will. And so what we do at Bonafide is, it is our mission to come alongside you, to meet you where you're at, at your level of knowledge and build from there. So your level of capability. So I together this PowerPoint or this presentation um, to give you guys some information or some ideas on how to present. So certainly this isn't the only way. Um, and so I want you guys, again, you guys have different levels of presenting and we want to learn and leverage the knowledge that's in the room. So I want you guys to be sure to engage. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, with the PowerPoint and we're gonna come in and out because I want to share some of the tools which are available via the internet and they're not embedded into the PowerPoint. So we'll be coming out of the PowerPoint and sharing on the internet. And so bear with me as we bounce back and forth in sharing the screens in that technology, okay? 
So let me share. I'm going to move this up a little bit to share my screen. There we go. Can everybody see my PowerPoint? Somebody has to unmute or can you let me know, um, yes. Tanisha, because mm -hmm. I can't see the yes. boxes, the Brady Bunch boxes. We see the, the boxes. It's a box at the bottom. Okay, the bottom. so let me, let me move this, try to move my little, uh, okay, there we go. So what? bona fide mind and money, the intersection of youth and young adult mental wellness and money is what we're going to talk about today. Let me yeah, we go get my little things here. Okay, so a little bit about me. I've been in the credit, credit card, banking, and finance arena for a minute, about 30 years. Uh, most recently, I was part of the Goldman Sachs 1 million Black women, Black in business, um, which was a phenomenal program. And I'm also an author. Uh, my first book is Bonafide Bits, where inspiration and intellect collide with your finances. So everything around finance, money, um, and getting people engaged. And I want to say one of the main pillars or things that I want to focus on is when you talk about personal money management, it's not only for the persons that we're teaching. And I know you guys focus on youth, but really think about it from the perspective of generational transfer of that information, of that knowledge, right? So it doesn't matter how old you are. You're never too young. You're never too old to learn. And that's why it's so important to meet the people where they're at with this knowledge and the goal is always as i say that the participants get it and the it is is the knowledge on how to in fact manage their personal monies because once they get it they're then able to take that knowledge back to their family their children their children's children their neighbors their church their community their family all of that right so that's the goal so our agenda for today, we're going to talk about the five W's, right? The who, what, when, where, and why. We're going to talk about the how-tos. And I don't know if you're familiar with mnemonics, but we're going to talk about a mnemonic because that's just another method of teaching that I find of value. I like mnemonics. I like acronyms because those are methods or means that help people to remember right? I'll give you some tips, some tricks, some hacks, some ideas, some strategies. But again, I don't want it just to be me. I want you guys to engage. And I hate that I can't see the chat while I'm doing this. So I'm going to rely on Miss Tanisha, my co-presenter, to pause me and let me know what's going on in the chat to hear from you guys, your strategies, your ideas. And I like for ideally that to go as we're going along and not necessarily holding everything till the end, because it makes more sense if we do that while we're going along. Okay, makes sense? Everybody in? Okay, so the cycle of money and mental health, because they really go hand in hand. And this is just kind of a cycle. Mental health problems make it harder to earn, right? And manage the money and spending and to ask for help. And that's the demographic that you all, that we all are working with. And so keeping that in mind will be helpful for us as we sojourn on this journey of educating this population of where they are mentally, right? And because of where they are, that makes financial understanding in some cases more difficult, right? And financial difficulty causes stress and anxiety, making worse the collection of activities and going through all these essentials, life be life, right? And it's, so it's this vicious circle, mind and money. They run parallel. If you're not in a good headspace, you make bad or questionable decisions overall, but to include your finances. So it's this whole circle. So we have to keep that in mind as we are teaching all folks, but including our young folks about money. Recognizing that fact will help us to understand them, understand where they're coming from and incorporate that in our training, in our educating them, right? So some stats. 
let's get to the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter is personal finance. And I like this slide because it just kind of helps us to think about things differently. Their mind is full. So we need to be mindful of that fact that their mind is full. So it's not really a question, is their mind full? Because we know their mind is full. Their mind is full of a lot of things. And so we, the educators, need to be mindful of the fact that their mind is full. So just ponder that for a moment. Okay. All righty. So when we talk about mnemonics, does anyone know what a mnemonic is? Can you drop that in the chat if you know what a mnemonic is? Let me see if I can click on the chat without messing everything up so I can kind of see the chat. I don't know if I can. I'm looking at the chat. And I'm going to move it over to the side. Is that box really blocking everything? If I have this open, what do you guys see on your side? Yep, it blocks it. Okay, so I'm going to close it then. Someone okay. said, Aaron says a saying or series of letters to help remember information. Absolutely, absolutely. And so like I said, I like mnemonics and acronyms because it helps people remember. And so a mnemonic that I came up with for this, what we're doing is always offer participants positive choices. Always offer participants positive choices, right? That's the mnemonic that we're gonna work with or dissect during this session of teaching you or giving you some tips and tools on working with the young folks. And so with that is the A for always is the audience. The O for offer is the outcomes. The P for participants is prep. The P for positive is present. And the C for choices is celebrate. So we're going to break down audience, audience, outcome, prep, present, and celebrate. And how we're going to remember the tasks that we're going to do is the mnemonic. Always offer participants positive choices. So I'll give you a minute if you want to jot that down or take a snapshot of this screen. Always offer participants positive choices. And what we're going to focus on is audience, outcomes, prep, present, and celebrate. And I wrote okay. it in the chat as well. Okay. So uh, audience is our first thing. So knowing your audience. That's the first rule of thumb. Know your audience. And you can figure that out several different ways. So for me, when I have a contract, whoever is my point of contact, I have a meeting or a session with that person to get some insight as to who are the participants. You know, try to find out what their level of knowledge is, um, their background, who is the audience? Who will I be teaching to, right? Because that will dictate kind of where you are or how you present. Because when you think about it, money is money is money, right? But when I talked about earlier, the it, that they get it, how they get it is how you present. And the audience will dictate how you present, right? So if you were presenting to um, conservative business, business suit wearing kind of audience, right? Stuffy shirt, right? You would present it a certain way. You know, the dog ran across the street and it was very elegant, da, 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 da right? You might have to present that way for them to get it because that's their language. That's their culture. That's how they understand. But if you were teaching, presenting to a more urban audience, you might have to say, you know what I'm saying? You know, Pookie and Ray Ray, when they went down to the, right, you might have to use that language for them to get it because that's their language. That's their culture. You might be saying exactly the same thing. Or if you recall, you know how your grandmama might say, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, right? So you're saying the exact same thing, 
but you're saying it a different way. You're using a different language, a different dialect, right? Different words, but you're saying the same thing. So that's what I mean when I say know your audience, find out who your audience is because your presentation, you're presenting to this audience. So it's really important that you know who they are, right? So when I'm doing young folks, some of my audience, I would use this little thing that I do. Um, I will ask them, what are your three favorite snacks? So in addition to, I might have to do a pre-survey and a post-survey, depending on who my client is and what it is, the outcomes that they're seeking, right? So this is a fun little thing that I do for them. And if I'm providing snacks and I have multiple sessions with them, this personalizes the snacks, right? And you think it's just a snack. But for some groups that I do, particularly kids that are like, in detention centers or those kind of things, the fact that I would give them a specific snack with their name on it, it goes so far because it means you singled me out. This is just for me, especially for me. Something that simple. And so I would, on the first day that I'm with them, when I have them doing the paperwork, the administrative stuff that I might have to do for this particular client, maybe I have to do a pre-survey or something, right? Which they don't really want to do, but they'll do it for me. So I have them do that. And it is that I was like, hey, fill this out. So they put their name in the circle and they list their three favorite snacks. And I collect all that up when I collect all that administrative paperwork kind of stuff that I have to do. And then on the final day, I put together these little snack bags, right? And I put their handwritten little note there and in there, I might give them other things, but in there, sometimes I do all three of their favorite snacks, or maybe I just put the first, their top favorite snack, or maybe two or three or just whatever, but something is personalized and it's their favorite snacks. And if I was going to buy snacks anyway, you know, why not go that extra step and get their specific favorite snack? So just those little things make all the difference in the world for that particular kid. And if it's an older group, you can do different things. So this is just an example, as I said in the beginning, this isn't the end all, the end all, but just an example of knowing your audience and being inclusive and very intentional about this specific audience. And it makes all the difference in the world of allowing them and them being engaged in the presentation that you're doing. Does that make sense? Anyone else in the group have any ideas or suggestions or things that they've done with audiences? Other things is doing icebreakers to get them involved and engaged right away. Another thing that I do in the first session, if I'm having multiple sessions with them, is even though I have a PowerPoint prepared, I ask them, what are some things that you want to learn, right? Um, again, making it about and engaging them, involving them in the learning process. And I tell them, even though I have PowerPoints prepared on XYZ topic, what the client has hired me to do, right? And I might have even already included in my PowerPoint the things that they're saying, but maybe there's something that I didn't include, but it's on the subject matter, it's relevant. Then I will include that in my presentation, even though I don't have a PowerPoint for it, I can talk to it, I can speak to it, because again, if I'm the expert on the subject and the topic, the specific topic that they want to learn about or talk about, I didn't already include it, then I will just include it in our conversation, right? Because now they're part of the presentation, that kind of thing. Tanisha, do we have any comments in the chat about no ideas? Comment. No comments in the chat, but I also encourage, um, our participants today, if you would like to come off mute, if you would like to raise your hand, if you would like to share, we can um, do that as well. Okay. Yes, because I need you guys to engage. Now, this isn't a Miss Pam's hour, <laughs> hour and a half. This isn't my show. I like it when my participants engage and share because it is your questions, your comments that customize the learning. So just like if I was doing a presentation to a group, which I am in effect, but I'm training the trainer, right? 
It is what you guys say that will customize what I've already put together, right? Okay, so audience. Another thing, let me go back and talk about some of the other things that I do with the audience. Um, you can interject different tools or what have you that might be pertinent to engage the audience, right? Um, sometimes, and I'll, I think I've got that later on, we're spinning, I have a wheel that I use sometimes um, or um, some apps. One that I use is Kahoot. So we'll talk about that. I think I've got that later on in the presentation. So we'll move on from audience. Again, does anyone remember in the chat? What was our mnemonic? Someone Sorry, just shared, um, thanks, great ideas to get buy-in. We try and reinforce participation with activities. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So we're gonna move on from audience. Our next letter in our mnemonic was O. For outcomes. So we're going to move on to outcomes. So again, the outcomes when you meet with or when you know your marching orders, your mission, your purpose for doing said presentation um, or working with the youth, then you know what you're looking for in terms of outcomes. And that will also play a role into your presentation, right? So um what are you going to measure? Are there some specific things that you are required per your contract or your assignment um, for doing this workshop or seminar or this presentation, right? So that might affect how or how you structure your presentation, right? You might want to measure the overall group. You might have a percentage of increase or something that you're measuring. You might be measuring engagement. You might be comparing one period of time of something versus another period of time of something. You might be measuring the change of an individual participant, you know, how well they did with something prior to this, participating in this program or after the program, um, some kind of measure of improvement. Um, you might be measuring their growth knowledge, right? So before you get started, you need to know what kind of outcomes you're seeking because that plays a role in how you do what you do, right? Why you're do why you are doing this presentation or putting together this workshop or seminar or what have you. So again, back to our mnemonic, always offer participants positive choices. We've talked about audience. We've talked about our outcomes. And if there's no comments, we're gonna move on to our next letter, which is our preparation, right? So prep. You might be doing it in form in terms of a PowerPoint, right? You might have some handouts of some sort that you're doing. You might need to figure out like who the audience is and be working with regards to that audience, doing some research on the audience, do some research on the topic that you're presenting on. You might need to be gathering some statistics that you might need to include in your presentation. You might need to, someone mentioned activities. So what kind of activities or what have you do you want to include in your presentation or your workshop, right? All of those things are part of your prep. Another thing is you've got to decide on the topics that you're going to include. It may be, you know, spending plans since we're talking about educating youth on personal finance, right? So you might want to be talking to them about a spending plan. You might be wanting to talk to them about career pathing, 
You might want to do something around paychecks and explaining that. So lost art, kids are getting these jobs. All they're concerned about is how much money they're taking home. They don't even understand how to read their paycheck. So that's one of the sessions that I actually do when I'm working with youth is understanding their paycheck. Who is this FICA person that takes a bite out of the check before they even get it? They don't even know, right? Um, understanding credit, all aspects of credit, not the credit, the credit report, your credit score, underwriting, you know, uh, what are things that they look at when someone is applying for credit? What are the credit lenders, what are they looking for? How do you get credit? What does it mean to get credit? What is good credit? What is bad credit? All of, They need to understand and learn that, right? So that might be a topic that you're covering, right? Depending on the audience, where do you start? How detailed do you get when you're doing your workshop, your presentation, your seminar, right? You might want to talk about buying a car, the terminology. There's a lot of terminology in the arena of financial capability of credit, right? They need to know the basics. Part of all of this finance stuff are contracts. Covering that, how detailed. And of course, with all things, goal setting and goal setting, personal goal setting, career goal setting, and certainly financial goal setting. That should always be part of the conversation, the presentation, when you're talking with young people, even outside of finance, goal setting should always be part of the conversation. They don't always talk about that in school, but our kids need that. And they need to understand. I tell my young people that you need to have goals, short-term, mid-term, long-term, because if you're not working towards something, by default, you're working towards nothing. And I like to think, that all people are working towards something. So they got to have goals. And I tell them that your goals should always be written in pencil. And that's figuratively speaking, because it's your prerogative to change your mind. But you always, always, always need to have a goal. Okay. Thoughts, comments, ideas, suggestions. There Come on now, is a people. question. There is you do okay. have a question. Someone Nathan asks, what do you think about a sample topic being providing young people with practical ways to save money? I absolutely love it. And I and I would venture to say on that, present the question to the young people as part of the conversation. Because it's always interesting to see what they have to say or what their opinion or thought is on savings. First, do the do they even have the thought of saving? Because too often their thought is only on spending, right? So it's always interesting to see, are they even having the thought of saving? And if not, we need to plant that seed, right? Um, and if they're already thinking of saving, what are their thoughts around methodology of saving, why they think it's important, right? And then build upon that meeting them where they're at and building upon that because it is extremely important um, we need them to clearly understand that they cannot, cannot, it's imperative that they do not spend everything that they make. And it's a mindset. And unfortunately, it's a mindset that's not always taught in the home. And when it comes to credit, when it comes to personal money management, our children use credit and money the way their parents did, good, bad, or indifferent right or wrong, that's their only roadmap. That's all that they know is what they were exposed to. And so until they know better, they can't do better. And so that's why it is of most importance that us, that we give them, provide them with correct knowledge for one, but giving them that opportunity to learn how to do better. And when we teach them, in so many cases, they will go back and teach their parents. And so being a lifetime learner, though, is also a choice. And not all parents are open to that, i.e. learning from their children, right? And so that, too, is a lesson that we teach. So 
outside of the young adults, the adults that we teach, teaching them and opening them up to being these lifetime learners and understanding that we all can learn something from all that we meet, right? Even people that are younger than us, we can learn if we open ourselves up to that. And so when these young people who are often open to being learners, being these sponges, and they learn, and then they want to teach those who are older, if the older people aren't open to learning, then they lose out, right? And so we all have to embrace being that lifetime learner and acknowledging that we can learn from folks, even if they are younger than us. So yes. I absolutely love the idea of considering and including savings as a component of all of this, right? And so as part of a spending plan, savings is incorporated in that. When you talk about credit, savings is a part of that. When you talk about goal setting, savings is a part of that. When you talk about terminology, savings is a part of that. When you talk about career, savings is a part of that. There is, um, um, Nathan says, thank you for your feedback and ideas. And there's a message from Connor. I've tried to work these topics in reverse, starting the conversation with goal setting first and foremost, and then going into the details of other elements through the lens of these goals. Does this limit the information they receive or provide more relevance? I, again, I think it goes back to when I, the first one, know your audience, right? Because each audience is different. And when you get to know your audience and how they learn, right? And where they are, that will make a difference. Because when you're talking about not only educating as it relates to financial capability, but this education in general, everybody is different and people learn different and people receive different and people marinate and digest information different, right? And so knowing your audience will help with that. There is no right or wrong. It is no one size fits all, right? And so for some audiences, the goal setting and trickling down is the best approach and other is flipping the funnel that makes more sense and is more digestible, right? And so it's really just getting a feel for the audience, but there is no right or wrong. And if you, and I, and I venture to say again, even that, put it in pencil. So if you start out with the goal setting and then you, and based on the audience, you're kind of feeling like, oh, it's not really panning out the way that I thought it would. They're not feeling it. Flip the script in, in midway. There's nothing wrong with flipping the script and going the other way, going the other direction and build into goal setting, right? It's okay. It's, there's no right or wrong, right? Because the end goal is always the same for me. And that is that they get it, right? And whatever it takes to make sure that they walk away with the knowledge that you intended for them to get, that's the end game is that they get it. And if it means flipping in the middle to make sure that they get it, then you flip it in the middle and change your order of things to make sure that they get it. We said good point, thanks. Mm -hmm. All righty, so let's keep on trucking. Here is another mnemonic that I've used for younger folks. Um, and it is when you're talking about credit, I can't believe it's simple because they always believe when you're talking about credit that it's difficult and hard. And so I created this mnemonic that says, I can't believe it's simple, right? And this is when I'm doing elementary kids, particularly when I came up with this one. And that's when we talk about um, credit. And so we talk about income, credit, budget, interest, and savings. So I can't believe it's simple. So that's just another example of a mnemonic that helps them, you know, remember topics that are relevant to money. But it's easy for elementary kids to remember, oh, I can't believe it's, it's simple, right? And then we go through the topics, income, credit, budget, interest, and savings, right? So how many of you guys have used cahoots before? <clears throat> Anyone? Someone, I see one that says I have. Oh, we have two, three, four. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna- Like a lot of have. 
Okay, so we're gonna, I think I had, let me go back. Um, um, um. Um, I think I had one set in here because I wanted to give them an opportunity to, to try a Kahoot. Yeah, here we go. Thought I had it. Don't mind, I have a million things open. <laughs> Let me say, I think I have to go out, <laughs> stop sharing, and then go to my Kahoot so you guys can um, Yeah, sign, log in. I think it'll log me in. So I just want to give you guys a test run of a Kahoot. Can you guys see my internet? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do a couple questions. Do classic mode. And I don't know if they have a free account. They did for a long time have a free account. So go to kahoot.it, say K-A-H-O-O-T dot I-T. You don't have to download anything on your URL, so you can do it right from your phone, kahoot.it, www.kahoot.it. And then when it asks you for a pin, put in this pin, 686-4346. And then you can make up a name. You don't have to use your real name, but just keep it clean. <laughs> or you can scan this QR code. And I'll give it a few minutes, get a few other folks to join. All righty. So then we're going to go ahead and start. And I think this one has some credit questions in it. All righty. All right. So this one has five questions in it. <clears throat> it says you want your credit bureau score to be low to indicate that you are lower risk. True or false? So you just answer either true or false. See, it's counting down. You got four seconds left to answer. So we had two people answer true. We had nine people answer false. The correct answer, you can see it has a check mark. The correct answer is false, right? And so then you do next. And I think I had this one. You can turn this on or off. I have it turned off, but if you had it turned on, it would give points. You get points for the person who answered correct and the fastest, right? It'll do a scoreboard. And so you can do prizes or whatever, but I have it turned off. That's why everybody is zero, right? Um, and then you just do next and then it's going to the next question, right? So Credit Karma is one of the major three reporting agencies. And so you can do true or false. You can do multiple choice or whatever. You can set the timer, for however many seconds. I think I have all these set for 20 seconds or 10 seconds or what have you, right? Um, and so again, we had two that answer true, nine that answered false. The correct answer is false. So see it has the X next to the true that lets you know that's the wrong answer. The check mark lets you know that was the correct answer. Because when you're setting it up, you set, you know, you put what's right or what's wrong. And then we're on question three of five. It lets you know how many questions did you had. This is a multiple choice. What should be paid first? Either your mortgage or your housing, car or transportation, pay yourself first or pay insurances, right? Since we had eight answers, we got five seconds left. It's counting down, right? We had eight that said your mortgage or your housing. No one said car or transportation. Three said yourself and zero said insurance. The correct answer is yourself. So three people got it right, right? And again, if we were taking points, it would show and it would show who's in the lead, right? And so if the rankings changed, it would rotate them around to show who was in the lead each time on the scoreboard. And then question number four, 
Interest rates can be good or bad for you. This one, again, is a true or false. You can do true or false, multiple choice. You can actually do fill in the blanks and all of that. You have different options of the type of questions that you're asking your audience, right? So the same thing. So we're going to zip on through real quick. Spending plan or emergency fund. And this one is actually no right or wrong answer. It's really just I wanted to know of my group how many people have them because actually everyone should have both. So this is just really polling to find out who has everything. So there is no right or wrong answer, right? Okay, so that is Kahoot. So we're going to stop sharing here and jump back into my PowerPoints. I was going to pause here just in case anyone had, I don't know if any there were any questions about the questions that you asked, like for someone that may have submitted a response and you were surprised that it was the incorrect answer. Are there any questions around that? Yes. Any questions about the question? <laughs> and you can raise <laughs> your hand and, and we will have you come off mute versus type in if that's easier. All right. What does pay yourself for pay yourself first mean? Okay, so that's a strategy. And it's really just about in your investments, right? So putting something aside like your emergency fund or what have you. Right. Again, that philosophy that you cannot, should not spend everything that you make. And making putting money aside a priority. So pay yourself first. Good question. Good, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to jump back into the PowerPoint. Um, can't remember what it's off. Let's see. I think we were we finished cahoots. Oh, so let me do the spin the wheel. So we'll jump out again um, and show you the spin the wheel. So spin the wheel is another tool that I use. Um, and I use this in a lot of a couple different ways. So let me. So we did a kahoot. So spin the wheel. This is one that I do sometimes if it's a prize that I'm doing, right? So see, um, Morris, they, it's, what time is it? Spin the wheel, right? And so this is if I'm doing a prize, but sometimes I use spin the wheel for, um, so we'll do the spin the wheel for the prize first. So let me come out and screen share again. Let's spin the wheel. And this is another free app. Well, well I don't, like I said, with Kahoot, I think they used to offer free. Can you guys see my wheel? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a free app. It's called Wheel of Names. And so if I'm doing a prize, I would add everybody's name ahead of time. And then you just hit in the middle and it randomly will pick a name and you can say how you want it to respond. So this one does the confetti and all of that. And, oh, yay, the person's name. See the clapping and all of that. And then you can choose to remove their name. Like if you want to continue spinning the wheel for different prizes and you want this person not to continue, you know, to be included. So you can remove that name and then continue to just randomly spin, right? So I've used it that way. Um, I've also used the spin the wheel, like when I'm doing, um, so let me close this and stop sharing and go back to my PowerPoint and open this other wheel that I have real quick. Um, that's the wrong because I want to show you how I use the wheel for when I am doing my self esteem stuff, where I actually use it as part of back to Zoom. and screen share this wheel. 
So on this wheel, like if I'm doing self-esteem and I want to engage the audience, right? So this is affirmations. And so I might randomly call on someone and then these are all I am statements. And so I would spin the wheel and whatever statement it lands on, the person who I have already pre-called on will have to say out loud what the statement is, right? So this one says, what made you smile today? So that person that I called on would have to say, what made you smile today, right? And then we would just keep spinning the wheel and kids love this. So whatever your topic is, so you could put finance stuff on here, right? Again, it's just a way to keep the audience engaged on something and it's random, right? So this one says something that gives you a sense of wonder, amazement, astonishment. Again, so again, just using this wheel as a tool to engage your audience. So you can put whatever you want on the wheel to engage your audience. So another tool, and that is a free tool. So it's called Wheel of Names, if you're interested in using it, Wheel of Names. And I use it often, as I said, just a means to either engage or to award prizes to my audience if they want to do something random. And then when it comes to goal setting, as I said, goal setting needs to be a priority. And this is a sheet that I use. Um, I use this one a lot with youth, but I have used it with adults even. And this particular goal sheet is, you can use it for finances or you can use it for personal goal setting. And how you use it in the top left, you prioritize. Never more than five, but they don't have to do five priorities. So things that they want to make a priority or goal for themselves. And then they take those priorities and they set these goals. And the three steps that it's gonna take them, the top three things that they have to do to accomplish said goal. And we all know that goals need a specific date, not next year, not first quarter, but March the 15th, 2024, a specific date needs to be set for said goal. And again, you don't have to have five goals, but no more than five, because you can have 50 goals, but you know you're not gonna do them as overwhelming and daunting, right? So that's why we limit them. And then this top right corner where it says, when I feel like giving up, I will tell myself. So this could be a scripture. It could be a mantra. It could be a quote. It could be something for that specific individual, something that motivates them, something that when they hear it, when it's said to them, when they say it to themselves, it won't let them give up, right? It is that something. And they put that there. And this should be in a prominent place that they, you look at on the regular. Daily is a good thing, but if not daily on the regular to remind yourself, to motivate yourself, to keep you focused on the things that you said you wanted to accomplish, right? Because goal setting is important because as I said before, if you're not working towards something, by default, you're working towards nothing. And I all know that everyone is working towards something, right? All righty, so goal setting. So now we're on the second P, which is present. So now that we've done, we know who our audience is, we know what outcomes we're seeking, we began to prep. So now it's ready for the big day. Oh, I'm gonna present, right? So what? what's your secret sauce? You've got your presentation all together. You are the secret sauce, right? So bring you, whatever is your flavor, whatever is your style, whatever is your language, whatever is your phraseology, whatever is your secret sauce. No one can be you but you. So be the best you that you can be. Don't try to do it like someone else. Don't try to say it like someone else would say it. Say it like you would say it, right? Deliver it how you would deliver it. That's the best advice I can always give. Just be you, right? 
just be you. And the people are going to, you know, everybody receives whatever you say, however you say it, it's going to land on everyone in the audience different. If you think about it from the perspective, when you go to church, the preacher is going to preach the sermon that God gave them to preach. It's going to fall on everybody in that service different. Why? Because their life experiences are different. What happened to them on the way to church might change how they receive it. You know, what happened the night before, what happened the week at work, all of that. So none of that changes how the preacher, the pastor, the rabbi, the whoever delivers. They're going to deliver it the way they're going to deliver it. And that's that. So just be you, right? Be secure in that what you're going to do, what you're going to deliver, how you're going to deliver it is good. Be confident. So self, think, feel, see, perceive, right? You are the center of what you're delivering, right? And so when you know your audience, right? These are all the things that you've already taken into consideration as you prepared, right? And all these things are showing up in the people that are showing up. You've already factored all of this in your preparation, right? You, you try to factor how people are going to think about what you're saying, how people are feeling about, you know, what you're going to say about their own personal situation. You, you factored on what they're going to see. That's how you kind of laid out your PowerPoint slides or, or if you're presenting without slides, right? Um, people perceive things differently. You, you've tried to consider and you have considered all of those things. Now you just present. And then, of course, at the end, you're going to recap. You're going to recap what you covered. I like to do Q&A as I go along, but at the end, I always, you know, um, ask for Q&A. And then I like to do fun things at the end as well. And most of the time, not always, I, I, I do include this slide a lot um, in workshops that I do um, because one thing that I want them to walk away with is about taking action. And so I'll ask you guys this question to see if you guys get it right. See who gets it right. Three frogs on a lily pad and one decides to jump off the lily pad. How many are left on the lily pad? Let me hear from you. Someone says two, 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 possibly zero. Yeah. Why? Someone says, I feel like this is a trick question. <laughs> yeah, you're feeling kind of right. That one who's having a feeling. Because how about it's three? Three. Someone say Why? three. Because he decided to jump. Didn't say he jumped. And that's relevant because whenever you're delivering, whenever you're receiving information, knowledge, that, that whole mantra that when people have said that knowledge is power, that is not a true statement. It is applied knowledge that is power. You can know every word in the dictionary, every word in the library, every book in the library that has zero value until you apply it, right? And so when you are teaching, stress that to your participants, that the value doesn't come in their attending your session and them hearing what you have to say and what you have delivered. The power happens when they apply what you have taught them. When they take what you have learned and they apply it and then they share it and then that person applies it, that's when the power happens. Right. So you have to, they have to take action. That's when the magic happens. Right. And so there's three frogs left on the lily pad because he just decided. But until he actually jumps, nothing happens, nothing changes. Because in order for something to change, something has to change. Right. And sometimes I'll just throw up a slide like this that just says, What have you learned? And I get that feedback from them, right? I want them to engage. I want them to tell me at least one thing you've learned 
during this time that we spent together, right? So then that gives them an opportunity in their own words to share one nugget, one tidbit, one something that they've learned. It might be something that they learned, something new that they've learned. It might be something that they were reminded of that they had kind of forgotten or what have you, but it gives them an opportunity to share, right? Because talking about it, writing it down, that helps them recall, remember. It solidifies the knowledge that they've gained when you write it down, when you repeat it. Repetition helps with our learning. So sometimes I'll throw a slide up like this just to help, right? And then I always or maybe have just a slide like this, question and answer. Again, to create that dialogue at the end to encapsulate all that we've talked about or I've talked about and shared because I don't ever stand before a room and allow folks to just, you're going to listen to me for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, however long I'm talking. If I'm in person, if I'm on a Zoom, I'm gonna have it, I will call on people. I require the engagement right? Because that's what customizes the learning when the people are sharing their thoughts, their opinions, their comments, and I can incorporate it because that also lets me take a pulse on the room of one, their level of knowledge already, but their understanding of what I'm saying, right? And allows me to, do I need to dig deeper on this? Or we kind of got this as a room and I can move on to the next topic or we need to spend a little more time right here or all of that. That's what the engagement will allow, particularly with young people, you know, or do they want to go again? It may not even be something that I have in my PowerPoint, but their questions, their comments might say, oh, well, I was going to go right in the PowerPoint, but they need to go left based on their comment or answer to a question, right? And for them to really feel like they get it, we need to spend some time talking about this. And so I spend time there because my end game, whether I get through all the PowerPoints or not, is that they feel like they get it, right? And that's exactly what I will do. I will spend as much time as we need talking about whatever subject matter that they want to talk about. And even though I ask at the very beginning, are there topics you know, they may not have thought about it then or may not have come to them until something that we touched on in the pe presentation and then, oh yeah. And then they responded or answered a certain way and it made them think of something, okay? So then sometimes I do this activity. I also, uh, another activity that I do is with money. A um, couple different ways I do with money, depending on the audience. Again, that knowing your audience kind of know what motivates them or engage them in the size of the audience. Sometimes um, if, if it's an audience that I know that everyone has a dollar, then I might do this activity. If the audience is small enough, if I have to do a pre-survey and a post-survey, sometimes I will attach a dollar to the pre-survey, in effect, pay them to do the survey, right? And so a dollar is attached to their survey. When they do the survey, I give them a dollar, that kind of thing. And then, or do the pre-survey. And at the end, when they do their post, <clears throat> post survey, I give them the dollar. And then I ask the question, i.e. the question about the frogs on the lily pad, right? About taking action. And I ask the question simply, who in the room would be willing to exchange their $1 for a $5? And everybody inevitably will raise their hand or say, I would, I would, I would right? Because who wouldn't want to change a $1 bill for a $5 bill? Some of them are debating, well, is it a trick? And some would be like, is it $5 real? Well, the other money's real. <clears throat> and they're debating and debating. And sometimes that's all they do is debate and say, I will. But I'm waiting on what? What am I waiting on? Action. Action. I'm waiting on action. And what action am I waiting on? Someone to get out of their seat. Hello. Get on up. Make the exchange. Something as simple as that. Right? And then usually in the seminar, you're depending on your, you might have a call to action. What is that call to action? You may need them to download something. You may need them to create their budget, like whatever your call to action is. Again, it depends on 
what was the purpose of this workshop or seminar that you're doing? You know, who the audience is, what outcomes were you looking for? There might be a call to action. Maybe your person that hired you or the reason why maybe they have to create or complete a spending plan or budget or whatever. So a call to action, right? So you might have some type of call to action slide or what have you. And then I always like to empower them or leave them some kind of inspiration or encouragement. So it might be a slide, something like this, that says, it's not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. If in fact, this audience's purpose was something around change management or something, right? So again, knowing your audience will dictate what kind of something and not only your audience, but who are you, right? Who did they know you to be? For me, you know, inspiration, my faith, all that stuff is important to me. And so these kind of things is something that's natural to me. So if it's not natural to you, don't do it. Remember that other slide, what's your secret sauce? So if this isn't you, then you wouldn't do this kind of stuff. It is what is natural for you. This is another type of slide. So again, these are just ideas or example. This is a slide of giving points to ponder. And again, I don't use all of these tools in all PowerPoints, it's in all sessions. It's depending on the audience, I might use one of these, right? This is a thought provoking um, slide that I might use in a certain audience. And this is thought provoking. When you look at this, what do you see? Let me hear from you. What do you see when you look at this? This is for young people. I use this a lot for young people. What do you see? You can share in the chat or come off mute. Um, I see Tiger Woods. I think that's Tiger Woods hitting a shot uh -huh. in the green there. Yeah. Um, pretty famous golfer. Mm hmm Yep. Yeah. Anyone else want to add to what they see? Someone said a golfer, an audience. Someone said a lot of potential. Yeah. yeah. All of that is true. What I want young people to see, the reason why I show them this slide, is Tiger Woods at the Masters, true. But a lot of people paid a lot of money to see Tiger Woods live his dream. But what I want young people, I want them to live their own dream, make that kind of investment in themselves. Live your dream. I, I, right. I, I, uh -oh, Go ahead. I guess I, I also see, um, I see one lone person who kind of says, this is for me as well. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? <laughs> like right. everybody else in the audience audience seems appears from the visual to be Caucasian and there's one African American or black individual. And mm -hmm. for me, it speaks volumes that says you too can participate in this. Right. <clears throat> it, it is him living his dream. Like in spite of anything and everything, I'm going to live my dream. He is intentional about his dream, right? And I need young people to be that intentional about their dream instead of being intentional about other people's dream. When they're out spending their money on all these name brand, this, that, and the other, sneaker, jersey, this, that, and the other, right? Financing other people's dream. I need them to focus on their dream. Some of our young people are so caught up in these other things that they have lost sight of and are afraid to dream, right? We need to give them that gift back. We need to help them to see that their dreams can be a reality if they would only dream. But how about dreams aren't magical in that way? How about you got to put in some work? Work, as I say in one of my books, I told you guys I'm an author. In one of my books, I say, success only comes before work in the dictionary. Everywhere else in life, how about you go out to put in some work? 
before you see success. Our kids have lost sight of that. This ain't a microwave mentality. You got to put in some work to see success. And it's up to us to teach, to show, to help them to see, to recognize, to know. It's not just about finance. It's about life lessons. Okay. All righty. So next C in our mnemonic, right? We've done our audience. We've done our outcome. We've done our prep. We've done our present. Now it's time to what? Celebrate. Hey. We've done the dang thing. And people talk about milestones. Yeah, we got that on here. But don't forget those mini stones, right? We need to celebrate those little bitty accomplishments because those little accomplishments lead up to those big accomplishments, right? How do you eat an elephant one small bite at a time, right? So let's not lose sight of those little bitty celebrations, those little bitty accomplishments along the way, right? Vision, goal, plan, actions. That's what leads up to success. We got to have a vision first. That's that dream. We got to set some goals. We got to have a plan in place. And then like that frog, we need to not talk about it. We got to be about it. We got to take some action. Because until we move off the lily pad, nothing's going to happen. We can't attain success sitting there talking about it. We got to do something about it, right? So celebrate, 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 celebrate. Any questions on anything we've talked about? Feel free to put it in the chat or come off of mute. All righty. These are just some samples. So now I'm going to shift in. We're just going to blaze through um, if there's no questions. I am not seeing any yet. Okay. Because we're a little over the hour mark now. So I'm just, this is a sample of a PowerPoint that I did. So I'm just going to blaze through it kind of just to give you guys an example of a PowerPoint on mental health and money matters matter. Right. So just a sample of, again, so like the PowerPoint, you can see like the, the even the, template that I chose because it was mental health and money matters. So that's why like there's the head, the thought, the puzzle and the dollar signs, right? Um, that's the whole, you know, keeping in mind our mnemonic, always offer participants positive choices, i.e. your audience, know your audience, the outcomes, the prep, the present, the celebrate, right? So a little bit about me, let them know who you are, you know, your credentials, that kind of thing, a welcome. In this case, I had to do a pre and a post survey. So I had um, a link to the forms that they would do, tell them their agenda, what we anticipate covering during the session, um, put it in a nice bow. And then we proceeded to go through the things that we were gonna talk about, right? And I like animation. I don't like everything to pop in on the slide at one time because I like people paying attention to what I'm talking about as opposed to reading the slides. And so each topic would come in as I'm talking about it. Even though I'm flashing through it all coming on, things would come in at one time. So I would talk about to yourself and love. And then when I finish that, then I would talk, click in the prioritize yourself, right? And then I have slides with graphics. We spun the wheel. And then we have this topic, right? And this is actually a video. So you can incorporate videos in your PowerPoint. So this had a video that talked about each one of these birds to help people. Then it was like a question, like, which one of these are you, right? So then this, the video played, it was embedded. Sorry, take it, you are um, and then determined common beliefs. So it had a QR code that they could go in and get some additional information. Then holiday spending, we talked about that, right? Um, then this gift formula that I created. So we talked about that, how to calculate, how to do gift giving for the holidays, how to calculate, determine how much money you're going to spend on each person on your gift list. And then talked about all these new things that are out these 
alternative payment solutions, right? Again, knowing your audience, giving them some good information. Then we had a bonus spin. We gave away some money. Again, going back to the original, I told them the topics that we're going to cover. So now we're on topic five of what we said we were going to talk about. Then do you have any questions? We spun the wheel, did the post survey. We gave away some, some more branded stuff and then gave them some another tool, five steps to developing a positive money mindset, right? See the little head, the brain's up there. It's all about the mind, mind shifting. We spun the wheel, did the, the survey again, and then the thank you, right? And how to contact me, right? So this kind of break, blew through, but wanted to give you a sample of what we talked about today, how to apply those tools in putting together a PowerPoint relevant to the mnemonic that we walked through based on knowing your audience. And so for you guys, here is a QR code or you can use the link. I put together a bonus, um, some resources for you guys that you can download. So when you fill out, it's gonna be a form that you fill out. Um, but I just wanna be real clear. I don't have a newsletter. <laughs> so you're not signing up for a newsletter. I was joking with Tanisha. She was like, are they signing up for a newsletter? I was like, unfortunately, I don't have the bandwidth. I'll have no newsletters <laughs> for the bandwidth for that. Um, the reason you have to fill out a form because I didn't load it on my website because when you load on the website, it is you're subscribing to typically, you all know when you subscribe on people's websites, it's usually because they have a newsletter and you're subscribing to this stuff. I don't have a newsletter, so it's not loading on my website. It's just going into MailChimp so that I can in one click send all of you who register this resource. I think it's 10 or 11 pages of some helpful resources, but it's not a newsletter. So you're not subscribing to that. Um, so I just wanted to make that really clear. Um, and you have until next week to sign up and then I'm going to send out the resource um, to those who register just as a thank you. And you all have my contact information. I'll give you a few minutes to do this and then I'll put up another slide that has my contact information for anyone who might want to reach out to me separately. But it has really been my sheer delight to spend some time with you guys this afternoon. I pray that you found the information that I shared useful um, and helpful for you as you sojourn in providing valuable information to the young people that you serve. Um, know that what you do is valuable, it's important. Our young people need you. Um, please know that you're adding value. Even if they seem like they're not listening, they are. Um, even if others don't say thank you, I say thank you because I know the value that you're adding um, for the young people that you serve. We need to give them the knowledge that they need to help them on this journey that we call life because life be life in, right? Um, and fundamentally managing their money is what's going to help sustain them, even if they don't realize that right now. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you for what you do. Even if you feel like you're in a thankless job, I say thank you. I know Tanisha thanks you. Absolutely. For, for what you do. Um, we appreciate you. And the young people that you serve appreciate you, even if they don't know how to say thank you. So, and if there's any final questions, please come off mute. I will stop sharing my screen here. Um, and I see so I, in the chat, great presentation. The youth and families we work with need this information you have provided an online outline with practical, useful information. Greatly appreciated. Well, you are quite welcome. Delighted to have been this instrument to share with you guys this afternoon. So if you know other organizations that can have value, please send them my way. Um, and I will, uh, if, you, if you're comfortable, I would love for you guys, any of you who are willing to do a video testimonial for me about your time that you've spent with me this afternoon, I would absolutely love that. Um, so I will drop my email 
in the chat and you can email me and it could be just something quick on your phone, nothing formal or whatever. Um, I would love that. If you're comfortable doing a video testimony of info, bonafidecc.com. Yes, please, please, please. I would love if you would do that. Um, and please connect with me on all social, on all social platforms or what have you. And as I always say, tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, because it's, it's it's really, really key. This generational transfer that I talked about, it is the key for making the shift in our community is that when we get this knowledge that we don't keep it to ourselves, that we take it home, that we tell our kids to teach our kids' kids, we tell our neighbor, we tell our family members, we talk about it at family reunion, we talk about it at Thanksgiving, we talk about it at Christmas, we tell our church, all of that, because that's where we're going to start shifting the mindsets and making a difference economically, generationally in our family. Is that because when we know better, we do better. And it's not that your parents and our foreparents wanted us to do poorly economically. It's just they didn't know. You cannot teach what you don't know, right? And so now that you know, we've got to be those frogs jumping off these lily pads. We can't just decide to do it. We have to take the leap because that's when the magic is going to happen, when we take that leap. And so I challenge each of you to start leaping today at your house, your neighborhood, your families, Thanksgiving's around the corner. And what a valuable gift to give at Christmas is the knowledge of personal finance right? Um, Because it'll change the trajectory of your family generationally. And what a powerful gift. A gift that will keep on giving, generationally speaking. Um, Thank you so much, Pamela. I'll pause and see if anyone has any questions, um, any thoughts that are coming up. Feel free to come off mute. Yeah, let's see. And I'm going to drop a feedback form. Let me see if I can find it real quick because I will have them do a feedback form too if they are open. Or I can send it to Is it easier to send it to you, Tanisha? Yes, you can send it to me and then it'll go out via email. And I just want to remind okay. everyone that after this session, you'll receive... Um, a link to complete a survey. Please let us know how this session was for you. If there's information that you would like to learn more around this topic, let us know that as well. Let us know areas for improvement. And there will be um, an additional link that will lead you to apply for CEUs at no charge. So be on the lookout for that. And thank you again for joining this session. Thank you again for having me. I love it. I enjoyed the time. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop recording.